subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Hello, uh, welcome to Politically Correct. I'm DK Singh. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to talk about this conscious effort by the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, the ruling BJP's ideological fountainhead, to grow younger and younger. We saw what happened uh, last weekend in Bangalore. There were some changes in uh, the team of national office bearers of the RSS, and there were some significant changes. For instance, uh, Bhayaji Joshi, who is uh, the general secretary or Sarkar Vah of the RSS, he was replaced by uh, Dattatre Hosable. And there were some other changes. There were two new faces who uh, joined as joint general secretary. But I'm not getting into uh, those details. I'm talking about this attempt by the RSS to, to look to grow young, given the demo demographic profile of, uh, in our country today. But before I come to that, let me just touch upon a few things what uh, happened in Bangalore uh, at the Akhil Bharti Pratinidhi Sabha meeting and the, those appointments. See, when we talk about Dathatre Hosable uh, replacing Bhayaji Joshi, one, that, that actually highlights one, one point. How RSS Pracharaks from Karnataka have been gaining uh, in profile within the uh, RSS in terms of their elevation uh, in the RSS hierarchy. So you have Dathatre Hosable who is from Karnataka. You already had Shiar Mukund who is a Joint General Secretary. You have B.L. Santos, he is BJP General Secretary organization. He has been loaned to the BJP by the RSS, but he holds a very powerful post to the BJP also. So these are three very powerful individuals from the RSS, or from, from Karnataka, who are playing a very important role in the BJP and in the RSS today. It's not the first time, uh, earlier also you saw the RSS Chief Mohan Bhagwat's predecessor, K. Sudarshan, he was from Karnataka, although he was... Uh, brought up, he studied and he was brought up in uh, Madhya Pradesh. Before that we had H.V. Shashadri, he was also from Karnataka. So this push you see, uh, people from Karnataka being actually promoted uh, in the RSS hierarchy, that actually tells you how the RSS is also trying to align its ideological goals with those of or with the political goals of the BJP in South India. As we know, uh, the RSS has been there in South India uh, since 1940s. It had its first Sakha in uh, Kerala, I think, in 1939 or 1940. We have spoken about this. It has been there in Tamil Nadu since 1940s, but somehow it did not expand the way the RSS leadership would have wanted to. Now that the BJP is making this huge push in South India, you see the RSS also promoting people from Karnataka who would be actually uh, giving that push to the ideological uh, goals of the uh, Sangh in, the, in, in South, South India. But coming to the main point, we are talking about the RSS effort to grow younger. You know, today as you see, uh, RSS has over 50,000 shakhas across the country. And we are given to understand by the RSS that only 11% of those who attend those shakhas are ever 40. That means 89% of the people who go to RSS Shakhas today are below 40. And then the RSS tells us that 60% of those attending your Shakhas are students. That is huge actually. That somehow reflects the demographic profile of India. And that's how you see the RSS also trying to induct younger and younger people. So in the new RSS team, what you see, uh, Dattatre Hosable, the number two in the organization, he is 65. He replaced uh, Bhayaji Joshi. Bhayaji Joshi was uh, 73 plus. Although he, had, he wanted to retire because he had this knee surgery and he was finding it difficult to move around in the country. But the, basically what actually uh, helped in decision making was the fact that he was, he was 73 plus. So if he were to be given another tenure, uh, another stint of three years, he would have been uh, you know, 75 plus in the middle of that tenure. That's what RSS did not want because RSS has this cut-off age of 75 years. After 75 years, you cannot hold any post. It has never been stated formally, but we have been repeatedly told by our top RSS functionaries that this is how it works. And we saw that getting reflected in the Modi government also from 2014 onwards. Not just that, it's not that, you know, just, uh, it's, it's not that uh, Mohan Bhagwat has brought it. We saw in two, way back in 2005 uh, when Rajnath Singh was uh, made the BJP president and you know when you have a, 
A BJP president's appointment, RSS, plays a crucial role. Rajnath Singh was only 54 then. So when RSS decided to move on from Vajpayee and, uh, and Adwani era, it went for a young face. But in 2009, when, when Mohan Bhagwat uh, took over, he has been actually making a very conscious effort to induct younger people. So in 2009, in the BJP also, you saw uh, Nitin Gadkari, when he became the president, he was uh, barely 52. The same thing you are seeing in the RSS also now. So RSS sticks to it. And when Nain Modi came as the prime minister of the country in 2014, he adopted the same criterion for the appointment of ministers also. So we saw many veterans like L.K. Advani, Muli Manoj Joshi, many other veterans not finding any place in the government because they had crossed 75. Some others who became ministers and turned 75 later, say people like uh, Najma Haptullah, people like uh, Kalaj Mishra, they crossed 75, they were trying to cling on to the chairs, but then the Prime Minister decided to get their resignation. So they got a few months over and above their, uh, that, that cut-off cut age, but they had to go. We saw in 2016, uh, Gujarat Chief Minister Anandi Ben Patel, she had to go because she was going to turn 75. So that criterion has been followed by uh, the BJP or Modi Shah-led BJP since 2014, when it comes to appointments in the government. When it comes to RSS, RSS is sticking to it, of course. So, how will it play out in future? Say, in 1925, RSS will turn 100. It was founded on, I think, uh, 27th of September 1925. So, when the organization celebrates its birth centenary in, in 1925, actually, in the same month, September, Two powerful individuals will also turn 75. It will be Mohan Bhagwat and Narendra Modi. Mohan Bhagwat is six years elder to Modi. But both were born, both were born in 1950 and both will turn 75 in a month and year when the RSS will turn 100. So what will they do? You know, what is more interesting is it's not just 75. We are, we'll get into what they will do, we will get into that, into that topic later. Let me first tell you uh, what has happened now. Now, there is this thinking in the RSS that, okay, let's bring the age further down from 75 to 70 and give even the Sarsan Chalak a defined tenure, say, uh, of uh, two stints uh, or three years stint, uh, maybe uh, twice or thrice, that's it, about six years or nine years. So right now, there is no defined tenure of the RSS Sanchalak, Sir Sanchalak. He continues as long as he wants, and then he nominates his successor. Now, there is thinking in the RSS to change even that. And if the RSS decides to bring that cut-off age down to 70, it will have huge implications for many of the powerful ministers uh, today. If the BJP uh, wins in 2024, you will have many ministers. Say uh, you have uh, people like uh, Prakash Javdekar, Thaurchand Gehlo, they, have, they are already 70 plus. So even going by the present criterion of 75, they are unlikely to find place in the next government if the BJP comes to power again. But if the RSS brings it down to 70, and as we know, uh, the Prime Minister, Prime Minister goes by what the RSS decides, formally or informally. So then you will have many other ministers, say uh, people like uh, uh, Ravi Shankar Prasad, people like uh, even uh, Rajnath Singh, they will find it difficult to basically continue the government in the next government, I would say, if the BJP comes to power, just to repeat. Because they are 65 today, by the time you have the next general elections, they will be closer to 70. And if 70 becomes the uh, cutoff age, probably uh, it will be difficult for them to stay on. So it will have huge implication. Just to clarify, no decision has been taken in the RSS as yet. This is just at a, st at a stage of discussion, but when it happens, well, we'll see a whole new crop of young ministers in the government. That is, if the BJP comes back. In the context we are talking about, about the cutoff phase of 75, uh, what will Bhagwat and Modi do in 1975? 
we don't know. I mean, for all we know, we are given to understand that given that it's the current RSS Sarsang Chalak who has been laying so much of thrust on this uh, cutoff age of 75, that he may decide to hang up his boots after he turns 75. We don't know about uh, the Prime Minister, but the Prime Minister who became an RSS Pracharak uh, when he was 22 and he's committed to the RSS ideology and even the unwritten rules that the RSS frames for itself. So he may be inclined to actually follow suit and uh, hang off his boots when he turns 75, but we don't know because he is indispensable to the BJP. And given that compulsion, probably the BJP or even the RSS may not be willing to let him go. There have always been exceptions. Even today you see you have uh, B.S. Yadurappa as Karnataka Chief Minister, he is 78. So the same exception can be made for Narendra Modi also when he turns 75. Everything is possible, but at the end of it, it will be Prime Minister Narendra Modi's call when he wants to retire, when he wants to hang up his boats. We'll have to wait. What we saw, I, I, I can just, uh, I'll wind up uh, telling you about this uh, one conversation that the Prime Minister had uh, during one video conference with his uh, uh, party workers in Varanasi. Actually, one of the booth level workers asked him or suggested him. Sir, even after you turn 75, please don't retire. You stay on. The Prime Minister gave a genial smile but said nothing. That, that's all from me now. Thank you for watching.